This presentation is an insight into the basic principles and methods that are used along with standard practice when installing ground gas membranes. We will provide an overview on the range of ground gas membrane products and the tools and techniques required to complete a successful installation of ground gas membranes. This video does not cover the complete installation of a ground gas protection system, which also includes building structure and ventilation requirements. Our range of ground gas membrane products include Memtech M1 Membrane Memtech R1 Radon Membrane Memtech Titan VOC Membrane Memtech Liquid Gas Barrier LGB Memtech Gas Tape 50 Memtech Gas Over Tape 150 and Memtech Detailing Strip As well as the Memtech range of products, you will also require a heat gun with power cable and a suitable power supply. The use of rollers for pressure sealing on the membrane seams. Scissors or cutting tools. Tape measures for confirming dimensions. Black and white marker pens. And cleaning tools to get the membrane in the right condition. Correct PPE should always be worn. Exact details will vary, depending on the construction site, and the specific, COSH, requirements. When working on areas where the gas membrane has been laid, it is important to be mindful of treading on locations where you could damage the seam lines of the gas membranes. It is also important to confirm the substrate you are working on, and that it is appropriate for the gas membrane installation, and safe to work on. The area must be clean, and any debris which could damage the membrane, must be removed. It is essential, to check all tools before they are used. Look at the leads, plugs and connections, and check the PAT testing is in order, and up to date. Visually, inspect all leads for any breaks or damage. Also check the sockets are in place, and are in good order, and will connect properly. To start up the heat machine, we turn on the main switch and set the temperature, according to the thermostat settings. This is indicated on the side of the machine. Also look at the manufacturer's instructions. Here, they give an advisory three minutes to warm up the machine from setting the temperature. To turn the machine off, we need to turn the thermostat down. We need to let it cool down for five minutes before we then turn it off. With the heat gun fully warmed to the required temperature, we can now apply the nozzle between the two sheets and use the roller to apply pressure to fuse the two membranes. This is normally conducted as a test seam at the beginning of the day, just to confirm that the welding is compliant. We can also use the scissors to pick probe or use the mechanical stress point test. Using a test sample, we can peel and shear the membrane to see how well it has adhered and how much fusion has occurred between the sheets. You can see the delamination that has occurred here between these two products. Now we can move to the main seam, where we will place the nozzle between the sheets, as we did in the test seam. Continuously angle the nozzle at 45 degrees, keeping the roller adjacent to the nozzle, to trap all the air that has been passed through the nozzle. This will activate the seam. Sometimes, membranes are spotted to keep them in position, or, weighting down the membrane should be considered. Also, be sure to maintain the 100 mm margin that has been specified. In this particular product, it can be identified by the dotted lines, and is one of the requirements the technician must achieve, during the course of their installation. We now move on to machine welding. As before, we check the equipment, cables and sockets to ensure everything is in good working order. We now set the temperature, and again, this will need a few moments to warm up. The pressure roller and the feave rollers should also be checked, and set to the required speed, to ensure they are working. We now need to set the distance between the rollers, to allow the correct amount of pressure as the membrane is fed through. To do this, we insert a double thickness of the required membrane between the rollers, and rotate the octangle notch to obtain the required pressure.
We can now run a test sample by putting the base sheet in the cradle of the machine, followed by the top sheet. With the FEV machine running, we insert the nozzle, and we can see that the correct amount of pressure is set, as the machine will automatically guide the membrane through. In a similar way to our hand welded joint, we should also pick test this sample as well. We now commence work on the main seam of a live sheet. We have confirmed the subgrade and have enough power cable to keep it running. Using the settings from our testing seam, position the machine as before. We need to stay close to the machine, just to keep it on track, it will not run purely on its own, so we will need to correct it, as it steers. If it goes off course, we can just bring it back into line. We can also adjust the line of the overlapping sheet if needed, to prevent creases and folds occurring in the membrane. Generally, it is best practice for all joints in loose laid sheet gas membranes, to be heat welded. This is a requirement for our Memtech Pro Titan VOC membrane. However, on occasions and smaller projects, the use of gas sealing tapes and over tapes can be used. Ensure the subgrade is suitable, and the membrane joints are clean and free from dirt and debris. Use the dotted lines along the edge of the membrane roll, as a guide, and overlap the two sheets by the minimum requirement of 100 mm. Place the Memtech gas tape 50 in the middle of the overlap, and roll out along the joint. Press the tape to the membrane, using a seam roller. On longer lengths, nick the backing paper to ease removal. Carefully begin to peel the backing paper from the rear of the gas tape. Seal the upper edge of the gas membrane to the gas tape. Press firmly and seal along the joint using a seam roller. The joint should be tested, to ensure there is a good continuous seal. Once tested, and to minimize risk of the joint being kicked open by trades on site, overseal the joint with the wider, Memtech, gas over tape, 150. Where Memtech liquid gas barrier, LGB, has been used for detailing, and there is a requirement to link this to a loose laid sheet gas membrane, then the Memtech, gas tape 50, and gas over tape 150, should be used to provide a suitable gas proof seal. Once the LGB has cured, measure a minimum of 100 mm from the outer edge of the application, and mark a line. This provides the minimum overlap between the LGB, and the sheet membrane. Ensure the joint on both the LGB and sheet membrane, is clean and dry. At the midpoint, between the edge and the measured 100 mm, place and seal the Memtech gas tape 50 to the LGB. Apply pressure to the tape, using a seam roller. Carefully remove the backing paper from the tape. Now, overlay the edge of the sheet membrane to the required minimum 100 mm overlap. Press firmly onto the sealing tape, and then using a seam roller, firmly seal the membrane to the tape and LGB. Test the joint, to ensure a good continuous seal. Once checked, and to minimize risk of the joint being damaged, 
Apply the Memtech gas over tape 150, over the joint. Here we can see an external corner, being detailed, using the required membrane. We introduce weighting down systems, to tuck the membrane tight into the corners. This also helps to prevent the wind from lifting it. At this point, we cut the membrane slightly over the required dimension of the corner. This will allow us to fold the membrane and start to form the internal part of the product. Using heat welding, similar to our previous example, we will fuse the corner down, to hold it and secure it. We then bring the other corner into position. Be mindful these will be full rolls on site, so the logistics of moving these into the right position will depend on where the roll folds, and how much is left on a roll. In this example, there will be a slight overlap on the corner, of 50 millimeters, which can be allowed to fold in, as we can see here. With a cut, we are now going to fuse the membranes to secure a corner detail. At this point, the top membrane is quite difficult to fuse at this location, so we can remove it, as we have still got plenty of material to form a 100mm overlap, which is an acceptable option. Continue to fuse the rest of the product, including the base location. We now take the self-adhesive product. This is a single-sided, self-adhesive 300mm wide roll. We cut these into 300mm squares. Keeping a standard formation of cutting, we will cut two 300 mm squares to strengthen the detail on this corner. Taking the first square, we work out by folding it in half, and a reverse half, to remove one quarter of the product. This will now be preheated to activate the bitumen and activate the sealing of the first part, which is this lower corner. We will then apply heat to the surface and roll down. Taking the second square of the self-adhesive membrane, we are now going to form the front of the corner. We have not pre-applied any heat at this point, as we are in a position where we can apply the heat afterwards. Sometimes preheating can cause a problem on hot days, it can actually adhere a little bit too early. We now bring the corner down. Do not cut the corner. Now we can apply heat and pressure on the surface. This is not welding, this is purely activating the bitumen coating on it. Now we take the base piece that we previously cut, to form the bottom part of the detail. Again, this maintains the 100mm overlap, as required. As there is not a 100mm cover on the top corner, 
a small top section, will need to be applied here. This will help to overcome any issues with potential fail points, or weak spots. Again, we cut another 300mm square. We now cut some 150mm squares, one of which, will be used to complete this detail. The remaining squares will be used on the rest of the building. Be mindful about keeping waste products, and that backing papers are secure, and disposed of correctly. Now, we can implement some checks, both visual and pick tests, to ensure everything is secure. If any heat needs to be reapplied, we can do it at this stage. We now move on to an internal corner, using the required membrane. In this instance, we are performing an upstand detail, and again, using weighting down, to secure the membrane whilst we are working. We will now start to perform the first cuts, to locate the membrane into the corner, as tight as we possibly can. This is quite critical, so that when screeds or insulation are to be laid, it does not obstruct the laying or placement, by making the insulation, kick up, or form into the wrong shape. Membrane installers will use their own preferred techniques for cutting these corners. In this instance, there are numerous ways of cutting the corner to forming it, and getting it as tight as possible. And again, remember to weight down, to reduce any voids or pockets forming in the bottom of the membrane, on the internal fold. We are looking, to keep the membranes as close as possible, so we are not creating any open voids, where there is no membrane to the potential hazard that is underneath. Small cuts, will allow us to turn the membrane underneath, and provide sufficient overlaps, for us to heat fuse the membranes. This makes the installation easier and more achievable. With the membrane in position and fused, we now cut a quarter square from the 300 mm square. We will use the 300 mm square later on. Instead of the quarter square being located at the bottom, this time it is located at the top. Again, we activate the bitumen by preheating it on the back of the self-adhesive side. We are going to locate this in the top section, to shut the vulnerable corner off, because we cannot manipulate the membrane round to shut it off. Even with an overlap, it will be a weak spot in the membrane's position. We now take another 300mm square, and fold it in half. We are going to locate it to determine the upstand. We put a fold in it here, just so we know the height. The bottom piece will fold back on itself and we will locate that tight into the corner. Now we remove the backing, being careful to ensure the two bitumen faces do not touch, as they will stick. As you will notice here, we need to keep one of the backing elements in position, and pull it out once it is in place. If the bitumen does touch, it is going to cause a problem, as it will stick quite firmly and it will be impossible to remove it. So here again, shutting down any potential pathways, we have formed a fold in the bottom. We have not cut it. We have folded it, and we will trap this off later on in the operation, with the heat application and roller. Then we take the remaining three quarters of membrane from the first cut, and allow this to form over the detail, to secure it. Again, keeping it nice and flat, so our bricklayers can carry on working there. We apply heat to adhere the membrane. Even in hot weather, we will apply heat, because the ambient air is not enough to get the bitumen moving sufficiently. Now we take another quarter section, from one of the previous leftovers from the external corner, 
and that's going to cover the base of the fold on the bottom of the formation. Again, we need to check our work and pick any weak spots or flaws. If needed, we can reapply heat from the surface, and just roll it down again. We will now detail a pipe penetration. Pipes will fall in all different locations on site. Some will be up against the wall, some will be in corners, some will have collars on, so each will need detailing accordingly. In this instance, you can see that the pipe is located where the membrane is going to fall against the pipe. Using a marker, and an off cut of pipe, mark out the initial cut. We are not cutting a huge star out of it, but we are keeping the cut very tight. It is very important, the membranes actually form in, and as you can see here when you look closely, there is an upstand, and quite a little edge turning up on that. Staying with the standard detailing strip, which is self-adhesive, cut two, 300 mm squares. By folding it in the diagonal, we maintain the 300 mm width. Cut two squares. The first square will locate centrally, over the pipe. In this demonstration, the square is marked by an indent from the pipe, but using a marker pen would be more accurate for cutting. Allow a suitable margin that is equal around the edge of the product. Folding it in half can make the cut a little bit easier. One tip when using scissors is to keep them lubricated by using washing up liquid in water. This will make it easier to cut through the bitumen. Now take the other 300mm strips and cut into segments which are 150mm by 100mm. Now, using the segments, work your way round. We need to be mindful here, of the overall height, and if there is a collar that is going to encroach on it. With heat application, it is quite critical at this stage that we apply the self-adhesive membrane to the upstand section first, and not the base. If you adhere to the base first, you will find that you will not be able to turn the membrane up. As you can see here, we are actually folding it back, so that we can get the corners in, nice and tight. This also enables us to get the heat gun underneath the bitumen, to create an effective seal. Work your way round this unit, to complete the seals. As we continue to work round, let's consider some of the PPE requirements. When on site, you must adhere to the requirements of the site. In this case, we need to wear a high-vis jacket, boots, and a hard hat. For these demonstrations, we did not wear a hard hat. You will notice that we are using gloves, one of which is a fingerless glove. The difficulty of trying to do something in this task with cut-resistance gloves is very difficult. It is important to include this in your risk assessment. All sections have now been added around the base. Bring the base plate back to the product, but do not remove the backing. Instead, score the backing paper, to allow it to be located.
Find the top section of the backing paper and remove, keeping a nice flat formation. Remember to remove all the backing paper. This is critical, as if you leave any behind, it will compromise the adhesion. Apply heat to finish the detail off. You will sometimes see a little bit of bleeding of the bitumen through the tape. As previously, with all our other methods of work, we will check around the completed unit, both visually and with pick testing. An alternate method for sealing around pipe penetrations is to use pre-formed top hats, which are prefabricated gas membranes designed to fit various pipe diameters. Ensure you select the correct pre-formed unit for the size of the pipe and check the top hat is a snug fit over the pipe prior to installing. Use a marker and an off-cut piece of pipe to mark the position and size of the pipe. Remember to keep the cut very tight, as it is important that the membrane forms in. As you can see here, there is a little edge turning up around the pipe. Now take the top hat and round off the corners. Slide over the pipe penetration, ensuring a snug fit. Taking a hot air gun and seam roller, heat the membrane and weld the top hat to the gas membrane. Work your way around the pipe penetration, ensuring a good weld between the two membranes. Ensure no rucking or creasing occurs. Once complete, check all seams to ensure a gas-tight seal. Where the top hat returns up the pipe, take a section of the self-adhesive detailing strip, which should be at least 75 mm wide, and slightly longer than the circumference of the pipe. Wrap the detailing strip around the pipe ensuring that 50% overlaps the top hat, and 50% overlaps onto the pipe. Once in place, use the hot air gun to warm the membrane and seal to the pipe, using applied pressure from the seam roller. Once the detailing has been completed, check all edges and seams to ensure a complete gas-tight seal has been achieved. Here, we can see some damage. In this instance, the membrane has been burnt through to repair this, we are going to mark 100 mm overlaps from the point of damage using a white marker. To form the repair, there are a couple of options. We could use a self-adhesive membrane, or we could heat weld a patch. In this instance, we use a 300 mm self-adhesive membrane. Using scissors, cut a suitable section of membrane. Round off the corners. Activate the bitumen with heat and apply the patch, rolling it firmly into place. Once detailed, check the seams and edges. Rounding off the corners to the patch minimizes the risk of unpicking and the edges being kicked up. Damage to gas membranes and their repairs should be recorded in case a verification officer wishes to confirm the detail or what the problem was. In this case, the damage has been identified 
and the markers give an indication of the overlap allowed in the repair. Here, there is a more severe cut in the membrane. This requires a slightly bigger repair. Again, mark the 100 mm overlap, from the point of damage. Additionally, there is a pin mark here, which has been identified as well. In this instance, it is quite a large area to patch. As an alternative to using a self-adhesive product, we can use the preparatory membrane that matches the product that we have been lining our building with. Again, we trim the membrane and round the corners off. This time, we are going to heat fuse the membrane. Locate the membrane in the required position, making sure the surface areas are clean. Starting off from the center, we activate as much of a seam as we can. The corners are rounded off to allow us to continue the seam around. Round corners also minimize the risk of pick points, which could be a weak spot in the fuse between the membranes. As you can see, the detailing is carried out by working in a diagonal formation and just shutting off between the sections. The white markers have now disappeared under the patch. If they were put in place by the verifier, it can help to add a fresh marker so they can see your patching has fallen within the perimeters required. At the end of the work, we carry out our own checks. A pick test, as can be seen here, has revealed a weak spot. This is quite common when you are hand welding, especially when you are working round in a circle or other awkward formations. This is simply repaired by applying heat and rolling. Our final part of our installation is recording the work that we have done. This will require photographic evidence as a record to accompany the drawings. Use a sign-off sheet to quantify the amount of work which has been done. Memtech Liquid Gas Barrier, LGB, is a liquid applied gas membrane. It can be used as a standalone gas barrier, or as is generally used, for detailing around penetrations, wall edges and column bases. You will require Memtech Liquid Gas Barrier and Memtech LGB Joint Tape. Protective personal equipment, appropriate to the product application and site, must be worn when using Memtech LGB. You will require a slow speed drill stirrer to agitate the product before use, and a brush, roller or airless sprayer for application. Surfaces must be clean of all oil, release agents, dirt dust and debris. Any surface water should also be removed. The surface can be damp, but with no liquid water. Prior to application, the Memtech LGB should be stirred with a slow speed mixer for three minutes to ensure a uniform blend and consistency to the product. The product is applied in a minimum of two coats and should be at least one millimeter thick based on the two coat application. Each coat should be applied in the opposite direction to the first. Using a brush or roller, apply the LGB in an even coat directly onto the prepared substrate. The product is a light pink color when first applied and dries to a dark red when cured. Where there are construction joints within the substrate, these should be detailed with the joint tape. This should be bedded into the first coat application, ensuring that it is flat and well bedded. When the first coat has cured and turned dark red, apply the second coat in the opposite direction to the first. Allow the product to fully cure and protect whilst curing from rain or frost. If the application of Memtech LGB gets damaged, then this can easily be repaired by cleaning up the damaged area and then overcoating with a further two coats of LGB, extending at least 150 millimeters in all directions from the point of damage.